Hello everybody, welcome back to the AI video. This one, we're in chat LLM Teams and today I'm gonna show you how to create your own AI brain. What do I mean by that? Simple, we are going to use their AI engineer functionality. We're going to create a custom AI chatbot, but here's the thing, we are gonna connect it, live connect it, to a document. So anything in this document, if you make changes to it, here's the thing, the AI chatbot will always be up to date. It will always know what you're doing. It will always know what changes you've made. Any adjustments, all done in real time. I'm gonna walk you through this. Let's go. All right, the first step's an easy one. Head over to their website, advocates.ai. Links in the description below. And then up at the top, click on New Chat LLM Teams. You'll get a new tab here. And a quick look around here, you'll notice that it's $10 per user billed monthly, which is an absolute steal considering the fact that ChatGPT is $20 a month and you get a fraction of what you get in Chat LLM Teams. Click on sign in, get started, and now let's get cooking. All right, here we go. So once you're logged in, you should see a screen that looks like this. First thing I do, head up here to the top, click on that little down arrow. It says GPT 4.0 or 4 Omni here. It may say root LLM for you, depending. But here's the thing, you wanna click on AI and engineer here down at the bottom. But before I do that, take a look here. Claude Sonnet 3.5, 01 Preview, 01 Mini, Quen 2.5, Claude IQ, Grok, all the big large language models are in here. If you want to use them, go ahead. But for this tutorial, let's go to AI Engineer. When you do that, you got two options here. The first one is we can create an AI agent. I have made videos about this. I will put links in the description. Or you can create a custom chatbot. This is what we want to do. Click on that here, and then bam, you're gonna see you create a custom chatbot. Now, let's start making it. All right, so now we're creating our custom chatbot or our AI brain. It's very easy to do. It's actually incredibly easy to do. The first thing you'll see here says, I'll help you create a custom chatbot. Could you provide a name for your chatbot? Not a problem. In this case, we're gonna do company, oops, company FAQ. And I'll space that out nicely, I'll hit enter. So we've named it. Now it says, I'll help you create a chatbot named company FQ. Thank you very much. Would you like this chatbot to use any specific company documents or data? And this is the part that we wanted to do because we want to create the connection to this data. And when we make changes or amendments or adjustments to the data, we want it to go ahead and connect to it and update the chatbot. So yes, we are going to type in, yes, we do. All right, and it is just helping us through this. And now it gives us the data set wizard. And I love wizards. So here we go. It says, I'll show you the available data sets that you can use for your chatbot. Now, this is extremely easy to use. All I gotta do is click on a little button here, a little drop down. We can select an existing data set. If you've been using chat LLM Teams and you've updated some data, you can go ahead and just select it right here. You can upload a file or a zip. If you wanna create a static, chatbot you can do that here but we want to use a connector and the reason why we want to use a connector again is because we want it to connect to a document or some data and that when we make changes to that data and we don't have to make those changes in chat llm we can make those independently we can make them in word we can do it in a google document we can make it in wordpress and excel spreadsheet etc all there we want that so we've got the connector now let's go i want to proceed yep and click on submit watch this here to create a new data set using a connector, and again, the connector is the important point, navigate to here, enter a new name for the data set, click read from external service, and then come back to the chat. So now, let's go ahead and do exactly that. All right, here we go. So we wanna navigate to this link here, and let's just click on the hyperlink and see what we get. We get a new tab, and presto, here we go. We're in our new data set. We get a few options. Tabular data, tabular data set with cloud URL paths to images. We're gonna not deal with images in this video here, or document folder or archive containing images, PDFs, audio files, etc. That's the one we want. We wanna to go to a folder here, so we're gonna go ahead and click on continue, and then we gotta name it. So let's go ahead and give it a name. So I'm gonna call it, I'm gonna go company underscore FAQ. Yeah, I gotta give it a name, why not? There we go, click on continue, and then we got a couple options. We can file upload, we can read from external service, or we can streaming data set. We want to read from an external service for this one. So I'm gonna click on that one here. And then look at that here. We've got connected file services. So if we wanna add a new file connector here, or we can connect with application connectors. Now Google Drive, SharePoint, there's a bunch of different apps that you connect with. And I've already connected a couple here as you can see. So let me just walk you through it here. I'm gonna add new application connector. 
There we go, and then boom, look at this here. Big query. We've got Marketo, MongoDB, Salesforce, all of the, even, uh, it's got everything here. Microsoft Enter ID. I don't even know what that one is, but OneDrive. It's all here, guys. But in this case, we want to use Google Drive because this is the one that I use the most. So I'm going to click on Google Drive here, and then bam, it says, hey, connect to Google Drive. All right, let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to connect to it. It's going to load up our little connector here. It should take a few seconds here. It's going to ask us to sign in, of course. So let me just come back when this is done. I'll take a few seconds, and then we'll sign in, and we'll go. All right, that didn't even take any time there. So here we go. I've got Curtis at Kingy AI. So let's go ahead and use that account here. It's going to ask me if I want to connect here. Now, you'll notice here that I have connected it already. But again, just in case, it says make sure you trust Abacus AI. I trust them. Click on Continue. And off we go. We are now providing that connection. And this connection allows us to go ahead and do cool things like update our documents externally and have them reflected in the AI chatbot, or as I like to call it, the AI brain. Let me show you how that works next. All right, so once we're back in this screen here, I'm just going to click on Google Drive, Curtis at Kingy AI. I'm just going to go ahead and click on that here. And then look at that here. It says, hey, you want to add in a data set? Yes, I do. We're going to browse for the location. So I'm going to click on that little browse button here, and it's automatically going to pop up a tab. And here we go. I'm going to go ahead and click on my Abacus folder here. And in the Abacus folder, you're going to see FAQ example doc. So I'm just running a basic Word doc. But again, if we make changes to that Word doc, it will be reflected in our AI chatbot and our AI brain, so to speak. So here, I'm going to select that here. And then, boom, it's gone ahead and selected it. Now, if I want to click on the advanced options, I can do that. But I don't. I just want to keep this nice and simple. And then watch this. I'm just going to click on Add Data Set. And it's going to do some thinking. And boom, it has been added. And you can now go through this here. You'll see here, data set ID. It says, hey, let, tell us a little bit about it. It's a document in a couple, how many rows? There's no rows because it's a Microsoft Word doc. Maximum number of versions, 30. I mean, you can go through this if you wish here. You'll see at the bottom here, it's reading it. It should take a few seconds for it to go ahead and finish up. When that's done, we'll go through the last step and then we'll wrap it all up. All right, so the connection is made. You can see here down at the bottom that it is said it read it, it inspected it, and now it is active. That is fantastic. If you are technical and you want to dig in, you can explore it a little further. Let's just do a quick snippet here. I'll go over here to the left side. I'm going to click on raw data. And then when you do that here, this is the data. I can just go ahead and click on these little eyeballs here. Let's click on the first one here, and then you'll see that we get the page info. We get the file path, but more interesting down here at the bottom, six pages, 686 tokens, just in case you were wondering. And then if we click on this little eyeball, for example, here, and again, I'm just doing this really quickly here. This is not a detailed tutorial on this component, but again, we could see here that if we go to show document, let's go ahead and click on that here. This is the actual document. So we can just go flip through the pages here, and you'll see here there's a table of contents. And let's get right to the end here. These are the general questions. And if we zoom in here, what is our company all about? How can I contact customer service? Okay, that looks great. Let's close that here, but let's look at the actual document I used. I've got it open here, and it is exactly the same. So there you go, guys. This is how it works. It's that easy to create an AI brain, a custom chatbot that updates in real time using chat LLM teams. If you have any questions, if you have any comments, if you get stuck at any point, just leave a comment. I'll help you out the best I can. Thanks for watching.